two nations in this world who seem to have a, 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 an advantage in terms of the amount of data that they are sitting on. Right? And when we talk about nations now, we have to be careful because unlike the industrial era, now we obviously have the private sector and large corporations that have to fit within that framework that we talk about. So when we refer to the US, it's got to be not just the US government, but let's say US big tech firms. When we talk about China, we want to talk about the Chinese government, but also the tech firms there. So with that caveat, of course, US and China seem to have this advantage on data. Yet there's a debate, right? Because data is just not enough. It's about the ability to make sense of the data, intelligently use that data. And as your fourth point, the institution's point alludes to, you've got to figure out applications of that data. So let's talk about that piece, right? It's clear that two nations seem to have advantage in terms of the data they sitting on. Where do you see the advantages lie or what kind of capabilities need to be built to make uh, use of that data more smartly? Right, so data is really essential for artificial intelligence because modern machine learning systems are trained on data. They're not rules-based systems like older types of software that we're used to, like commercial airline autopilots that are based on a set of rules about how the aircraft should perform. For machine learning systems, they're trained on massive data sets. So having very large and diverse data sets is key. And certainly countries like China, the United States and others are going to have access to data. In many ways, data is a pretty level playing field. What's going to matter more is finding the best ways to harness that data, as you said. And so that's really about a process for building a pipeline for refining that data, collecting it, refining it, getting it ready to train a machine learning system. Because just like you can't take crude oil pumped out of the ground and then stick it into a car and have the car run, you have to refine the oil. You also have to clean up and refine the data to get it ready to train a machine learning system on it. You can think of data as sort of the, the oil that fuels the engine of machine learning. And you've got to refine that to make it useful. And so having a data management process, which sounds boring, <laughs> you know, uh, but that doesn't sound very exciting, but that's the reality for companies and for countries. That's what's going to make a difference in terms of them getting a competitive advantage over others. And how do you start to measure that, right? So if you wanted to benchmark countries on that particular metric now, how do you start to even measure that uh, capability? Well, this is what's really interesting is that a lot of the the areas, the metrics that have been thrown out about data, when I looked into them and in researching the book, I think people are focused on actually the wrong things. So for example, one of the statistics that's been thrown around is that China would have an advantage in data because of their larger population versus say the United States or Europe, for example. And it's true that China has a bigger population and they have more internet users than the United that's States true. or Europe. There's the same but, argument, by the way, that India is making domestically to say that actually we have an advantage because much like China, we happen to be sitting on a massive uh, internet, mobile internet user base that's transacting online all the time now. Right, and that's, that's not a bad thing. Right? It's better to have more data. Volume does matter here in terms of data, but what matters more is having tech companies that have global reach. So US tech companies have operations around the world. They're just not, they're not confined to the US population. YouTube and Facebook have over 2 billion global users each. Whereas we've seen with Chinese companies, they've really struggled other than TikTok to gain a foothold outside China. And so having um, the aggregate number globally of users is important, having global reach. And it also helps the diversity of data, which is really important because algorithms often don't translate across different kinds of data. So the way that you know, Chinese internet consumers might make purchases, right? Might be different than Indian internet users or internet users or European in European or American. That's right. Right, Brazil or somewhere else. Um, so that diversity is also key.